Many observers, present company included, would argue that Motorola's beautiful Moto 360 smartwatch is the most exciting tech product to be announced in years. In fact, I'd take it a step further. It has the opportunity to be the most transformational product in the most transformational product category since the smartphone. That's not an overstatement. Every company from Apple to Google has its brightest minds trying to dream up the device that's going to finally push wearables from nerdy gadgets to must-have accessories. This isn't just a hobby, some kind of fad or corporate sideshow that'll pass in a year or two. Wearables are here to stay, and whoever gets to market with the first no-compromise smartwatch stands to reap the spoils. But at this point, the 360 is just being dangled at us from afar with precious few details apart from the promise of a summer launch. Come on, just do something with it. No, I will not. <laughs> I can't. Everybody here wants to see your watch do something. I know. <laughs> Why did you bring it then? I'm testing it's it. Like you're, it's like you're torturing <laughs> all of us. The job of turning it into a real thing that you or I can buy now falls to some of the nearly 2,000 Motorola Mobility employees who, to put it lightly, have other things on their minds. Earlier this year, Google rather suddenly announced that it was selling Motorola, which it had acquired just a year and a half earlier, to Chinese computing giant Lenovo. Meanwhile, Moto was in the final stages of a long-planned move of its corporate headquarters from a dreary campus north of Chicago to the heart of the city where it got its start over 80 years ago. The tumultuous process of engineering the kinks out of the 360, a complex and absolutely critical product for Motorola, is stressful enough. But when you tack on the drama of a high-profile corporate divorce coupled with a relocation, an event deemed important enough to bring out Chicago's unfiltered mayor, Rahm Emanuel, well, that's just a lot to deal with. Well, we're used to change, as you know. <laughs> right, right. Over the last three or four years, there's been a lot of change, and this is, you know, another, another phase of it. But, you know, if change is good in so many ways. It gets you out of your comfort zone, has you challenge some things you typically wouldn't. So, you know, the change actually is, is, is turning out to be really quite good for us. And what are your first priorities in the new facility, your, your first product priorities, what are you working on that you really need to just kind of hit the ground running in, in a brand new building? Uh, everything, right? You don't, you don't skip a beat. You can't skip a beat, as you know, in our industry, right? So um, we're continuing to, to you know, drive on what we're doing in terms of the whole Moto franchise of products with the X's and the G's and, and the follow-ons for those products, of course, and the droids. Uh, and then uh, Moto 360 and, you know, the whole wearable set of products that I think are going to be really interesting over the next couple of years. Like Motorola, Motorola's new home is an octogenarian too. The enormous merchandise mart on the north bank of the Chicago River, one of the most imposing and spectacular structures in the city, opened just two years after Motorola was founded in 1928. The company has been renovating it for months, transforming it into a ridiculously hip space that centralizes practically all R&D operations into the top few floors of the building. What might come as a surprise is that it's dotted with all the spoils of a well-funded Valley startup. Mini kitchens that are stocked to the ceiling with snacks and caffeine, an enormous game room, and an open rooftop that commands one of the best views in the entire city. Feels a little, shall we say, googly. But this isn't a Google company anymore. It's Lenovo's turn to try making Motorola into the global force it once was. And with the Moto X in the rear view, it's all on the 360. The, the expectation, I'm assuming, is that anyone who wears a watch or might wear a watch is a potential customer for this versus someone who just wants a gadget on the wrist, right? Yeah, we think it actually broadens the appeal, um, and it does what you know. One of the one of the people in the watch industry are talking, you know, to said it was the first device that really broke the fashion barrier, uh, and we think we've done that. So people will consider it as a watch that also does all these amazing things, right? Mm -hmm. So you definitely have your watch face, which is going to be cool and iconic because that's a central part of a watch. But with what we're doing with Android Wear and how contextually relevant the information is that's going to be delivered, mm -hmm. I think it's going to really going to be a reinvention of the modern day timepiece, both from the services and what it does in terms of maybe rethinking what time telling and time is, to the form factor itself. <laughs>